Hey everybody! All right, so this um, last, or this weekend, I built a little app that I needed. Um, so I listened to this podcast called Writing Excuses, and it's really cool if you're into writing. Um, it's by a bunch of really awesome authors. Um, but yeah, so their RSS feed goes back to season 11, like partway through season 11, I think. And I wanted to get some of these older episodes. And on the computer, I can uh, hit listen, and then I can right click on this, and then I can, here, let's pause that. Ah, oh, shoot, now I messed it all up. <laughs> okay, ah, stop. Okay, so then I pause it, I right click on it, inspect, and what? There we go. So I'm highlighted on audio. I can go $0.playback rate equals 3. And then I can listen to it at the speed that I like to listen to podcasts. And I can do that on the computer. I even have, check this out. I've got this um, snippet. And it's speed up. Basically, it'll take all video and audio um, tags on the page and speed them up to 2. Uh, but it also creates a speed up. Whoops. Speed up global variable where I can just call it and speed everything on the page up to three, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah, so it's great. Works awesome on the computer and there are even like extensions and things, um, Chrome extensions that'll make it really easy to do stuff like this. But um, when I'm listening to the podcast, it's normally because I'm listening on, um, on my phone and I can't do this on my phone, not easily anyway. And so I decided, hey, I'll just make this little audio speeder app I can add a URL and I'll go here, we'll uh, right click download and uh, copy link address and then just paste it in here, poof. And then I can listen to it here and I can speed it up and I can jump ahead and jump back. And so, yeah, it's pretty cool. And then I can exit that out. Um, and then I can use this on my phone and um, yeah, I know we're works really well. But then I was worried like, oh, what if I accidentally close the tab and stuff? So I added local storage support for a bunch of the items of state that I have. And that seems to work really well. So um, what I wanted to show you today was uh, w w like when I switched from state, let's see, let me see if I can find one of these invocations here. Yeah. So when I switched from use state to use local storage state, it was actually remarkably easy. I didn't have to change this very much at all. And then all of a sudden, um, I just got local storage support, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. So the play playback rate stays at what I want it to, which I think is pretty rad. So that's what I wanted to show today um, was, yeah, let's go ahead and make a local storage state um, hook. So um, I am uh, using the latest stuff. We've got alphas and whatnot. Stay away from those if you don't want to get burned. Um, so we'll get rid of the box. I don't need the box. We'll just do a div. Div. In fact, what we'll do is we'll do my favorite button count. We'll do a counter on click. Uh, click. Um, set count. Do count plus one. All right, so we'll go count and set count equals use state, start at zero, and then we'll pull in use state from here. We'll get rid of that, and poof, we've got it, our counter. All right, sweet. So let's go ahead and make this use state a custom hook for local storage. So we'll say, actually, you know what? We'll do it right in here, and then we'll, we'll fix it up to uh, be a custom hook. So um, I'm going to add a use effect, use effect in here and we'll say use effect and um, whenever the count changes I want this effect callback to be called and we'll say um, window local whoop, storage dot set item count or I don't know my app count I like to namespace stuff I don't know why um, so we've got my app count and the value we want it to be set to is the count all right sweet and then we need to initialize it to a value. So I'm going to do the callback thing here so that I don't have any um, perf issues when I'm re rendering. I don't want to read from local storage every single time. So we'll return window.localStorage.getItem uh, my app out. But that's going to be a string. So we're going to say JSON um, parse 
and it could be undefined, so we're gonna say or, let's see, actually, yeah, or it could be null, I guess, um, and so we'll say or zero, and we've got something is wrong, unexpected token, oh, uh, huh, weird, oh, because it's undefined, boo, let's, uh, well, this way, I guess we could do a try catch here. Let's do that. We probably want that anyway. Um, if local storage gets messed up, so we'll ignore, ignore, ding, and let value, and then we'll say the value equals this, value equals that, and then we'll return the value. Oop. Cool. All right, sweet. So. Um, uh, and then in this case, we're going to have it be zero. There we go. Sweet. So then I can increment and then I can refresh and it should be five when it finishes refreshing. What? Come on now. There we go. All right. It's six and I refresh and it's six, seven, sweet forever and always. And then we could add like remove item and whatnot. Um, let's do that. Let's, let's make that happen. So um let's say just do a fragment here um and we'll say button on click um clear yeah well we'll just do window local storage dot clear or remove item my app count and this will say clear button and then we can clear it and then we'll have to um, also update the actual count value. So here, let's let's make this a, a function. Function um, remove count or here, clear count. And so then we'll do this. Or actually, you know what? We don't have to do this because our use effect will update it. So here we get rid of all this stuff. This is the nice thing about using a, an effect um, rather than just having your callback be the thing that updates local storage is now anytime my count changes for any reason at all, it will um, uh, it will update uh, my local storage, which is sweet. So here, now we'll say set count to zero. There we go. That's a lot easier. We'll click, 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 clear, click, 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 clear, and refresh, and it'll be zero again, and then click, click, and refresh, and it's too sweet. We're all set. Now let's turn this into a, uh, somebody just um, in my thread said Angular is the future in all caps and fire. Um, I'm sure Angular is great. So, okay, we've got use local storage state. And we're gonna take, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna take an initial value or like maybe a default value. That's probably what it should, should be. So our, our default value. <laughs> And then we'll um, also have a, uh, um, a key. So that's probably what we want first is our key and then our default value. And then I'm just gonna copy all this stuff, put it right in here. Uh, and instead of count, this is gonna be here. I guess we just have set count. So set um, value or yeah, sure. And then, well, no, now I'm gonna get a name clash. So we'll say set state, we'll call it state count is going to be state um, but instead of this my app whatever this is going to be key whatever the key is and then instead of zero here this is going to be string of our default value or json uh, stringify of our default value and then our value would be the default value sweet okay so we're kind of doing a bunch of weird stuff here let's see what if mm, nope we're going to just leave it like it is Okay, so then we're gonna return state and set state. And uh, maybe there is a, a reason that we'd want to actually remove the item from local storage um, and, and not have to update the actual value or we, we'd update the value and remove it from local storage. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, if there was, it, it's pretty easy. So we'll just say, um, remove um, value and that will just simply be window local storage 
uh, oh, whoops, not remove item, um, and it's going to be the key. Yeah, so once I have three things, then I'm going to change it uh, to an object state. You know what? That's kind of a silly thing. Let's let's not support that. They can remove it themselves if they want to. Okay. Anyway, so we're going to do count and set count equals use local storage state. And our key is going to be this thing. And our default value will be zero. And then we can get rid of all this. Ta -da. And now um, magically we support uh, local state. And so what the cool thing is, is um, like if you have this hook already, um, you didn't like do all the weird stuff that we did. And before you were just using use state and you're like, okay, cool, bum, 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 clear, that's nice, okay. So then we refresh and we lose it. We're like, oh no, we want local storage state. Then the, your refactor amounts to importing the, the hook or whatever, then pasting this in and then providing a key, my app count. And now all of a sudden, like without changing any other code, you have um, state that's using local storage. That's the power of hooks. It's so good. I love it. Um, yeah, and so it's kind of fun. The, here, here's the kind of the sad truth, the sad reality of hooks is that um, they're so hyped up right now um, and they're so easy to create custom hooks that by the time hooks are actually stable, every conceivable hook that you could possibly create that's reusable uh, will have already been written and published to NPM at least four times. So I'm pretty sure there are several use local storage hooks. I think there's uh, the platform um this probably has local storage and then react hook or react you or i think it was use react um is another package let's see on github so let's see local storage no it's not on the platform that's weird um react to use maybe this is it local storage yep there's use local storage right there so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, so the, like er everything that you could ever possibly imagine has already been written. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of cool, uh, but it's fun to implement this yourself. It's, yeah, pretty straightforward, hopefully. And I think I'm going to jump out. Uh, let me just check out the chat. Um, Hooks are so nice, it's easy just to write the hook you need yourself anyway. Yeah, I kind of agree with that too. Like rather than install uh, an entire NPM package for something like this, you just write it yourself. Um, it's kind of nice. So yeah, anyway, I hope this was interesting and fun and whatever. Um, let's see, so uh, King Daro also said, can also make them work exactly the way you need to. Most of the use async or use promise hooks didn't work the way I needed them from a personal one to do. Yep, that's the nice thing about writing it yourself is you only need to support the things that you need to use and it uh, is supported in the way that you need it. Yeah, so that's kind of nice. All right, this was fun. I hope you have a nice day and uh, I will see you later. Bye.